Hey, it's James in the Net News Ledger newsroom. We're talking with Bruce Heyer, the Green Party MP and Deputy Leader of the Green Party and Thunder Bay Superior North MP, and we're talking about the Canada-Chinese trade deal. Bruce, what are your initial thoughts on this deal? My initial thoughts on this deal, as I've been saying for well over a year, is that the Canada-China FIPA ratification uh, uh, is a disaster. It was a disaster potentially before. Now cabinet has uh, away from parliament, no parliamentary vetting, discussion, debate, uh, anything has uh, apparently approved it. Uh, FIPA stands for uh, the Foreign Investment Protection in Agreement. Uh, so this FIPA agreement with China uh, is a very big worry. It's basically selling uh, Canadian autonomy in a number of ways, uh, including fiscally. And part of it that really bothers me is particularly in terms of uh, our natural resources and, and especially our str strategic national uh, uh, resources. So as we know, communist Chinese companies, including uh, ones owned by the state, have been interested in acquiring Canadian strategic resources. And as the uh, world's largest steel producer by far, um, almost half of global production last year, China is looking for resources like chromite, coal, and iron. Um, they, you may remember the giant Nexen takeover last year, which was approved by the Harper government. That was just the latest and biggest Chinese t uh, takeover of Canadian assets. It's my understanding that um, on the, uh, the cliffs, uh, selling off of uh, the resources in the Ring of Fire, uh, that there's uh, there certainly are rumors anyway that much of the funding on the takeover of those assets will be funded by Chinese uh, money and, and perhaps more. So um, the Harper's Foreign Investment Protection Agreement with Communist China is very one-sided, and it goes way, way beyond any other investment deals with foreign countries. People will allow Chinese companies to sue the Canadian government for damages if any new law, policy, or decision is taken by Canada that impacts the value of that Chinese company's assets or business in Canada. So this is this is a little bit like if a if a child were to be able to punish his parents for not letting him have cookies before supper. Good <laughs> metaphor. So, uh, James, this includes any health or labor standard or environmental regulation. In other words, if we pass any regulation that costs a, a Chinese company money under this deal, they can sue our government to pay them back for it. Now, in the... Um and, and even worse, James, that's far more power for Chinese companies than any Canadian company has. It puts Chinese companies, communist Chinese companies, operating in, in Canada at a huge advantage over Canadian countries. It, it means that federal and provincial government's hands will be tied when it comes to ensuring that the value-added benefits from Canadian resources go to Canadians. For example, if a Chinese company gets involved in the ring of fire, we will no longer be able to say that chromite extracted has to be processed in Ontario or even in Canada at all. That's insane. Now, the... The Prime Minister has just completed his annual trip to the north and he is equipping the Canadian Rangers with uh, new armaments so that we can better protect the north and talk about our sovereignty. And yet, what would cause a government to want to make a deal like this, in your opinion? Well, uh, this is partisan, I guess, uh, but uh, very partisan. But I really see uh, Stephen Harper as not working for Canada or Canadians or even Canadian corporations for the most part. He works for large multinational resource extraction companies no matter what com uh, country they come from. And he puts the interest, large corporate interest from across the globe ahead of Canadian citizens, ahead of Canadian workers, ahead of Canadian autonomy, and even ahead of Canadian corporations. Once again, this is absolutely insane. Let me give you an oil example uh, right now. It doesn't have to do with, with China FIPA, but it gives an example of, of Harper. We 
now export twice as much oil in the form of crude dilbet to the U.S. as we import into Canada. And most of the imports into Canada are in eastern Canada. 80% of all the oil we use in Thunder Bay and across eastern Canada in our gas tanks and our homes comes from Brent crude. And mostly from places like Arabia, Arabia and Venezuela. And further, uh, we sell oil in Western Canada to the U.S. to be shipped down to Galveston, Texas, and, and uh, refined, and some of it sold back to us at a 30% discount. And Brent crude that we import into Eastern Canada is the most expensive oil in the world. Now, my dad was an investment banker, and he taught me from the time I was a little taught Bruce, the first rule of business is buy low and sell high. And here in Canada, we, uh, we sell uh, low and we buy high in eastern Canada. So we not only have energy insufficiency and no national energy strategy whatsoever, but we are paying the highest price in the world in eastern Canada for insecure oil and exporting our secure oil in western Canada. It's absolutely crazy. So what's the strategy from the Green Party side to, you know, the government's probably fired this through. They have a majority. Uh, what can be done or can anything be done? Well, um, we have a bizarre electoral system in Canada that is only in five of the 95 democracies in the world. We have about 95 democracies in the world. In five of them, uh, that is uh, Britain, Canada, U.S., India, and that bastion of democracy, uh, Zimbabwe, if you can even call that democratic. Those are the five countries that have a first-past-the-post electoral system, which means that you can get 38 or 39 percent of the vote, get 60 percent of the seats, and 100 percent of the power. So if we had real democracy in Canada and, and, and a proper voting system, as most democracies have, we would have collaboration and compromise between a variety of, uh, uh, of uh, parties, except under those unusual circumstances that happen occasionally in other countries where one party is so strong that they actually get over 50% of the vote and therefore true democracies. Here in Canada, we have a false democracy where, uh, as I said, with 39% of the national vote and only 24% of the electorate, because many people have given up voting uh, in our system, you can get 100% of the power. Uh, it is a problem, uh, James, there's no doubt about it. Uh, this isn't really what you asked me about, but I can give you a prognostication, though, as to what's going to happen in the next government. Uh, I'm quite sure that Harper will not be forming a majority or probably even a minority in the next uh, in the next House and the, after the next election. I'm quite sure it will be some kind of Trudeau liberal government. I'm pretty sure it's going to be a Trudeau, a liberal minority government. And I think there's an excellent probability that when we get, and I do believe that we're going to get five or six green seats across Canada, that uh, Elizabeth and Bruce uh, and the uh, other new Green members are going to have a very large role to play in a coalition, gov uh, coalition or minority government where Thunder Bay Superior North can end up holding a significant portion of the balance of power. Bruce, I thank you very much and uh, we'll keep talking.